Welcome to this video. I'll show you how to do the data analysis for the Optical Images Lab. Here's my data. It doesn't look very good. The first thing I need is I want these column headings not to spill over to the right, but I want them to move on to a new line. So I come and hit the, the wrap text button, and now they spill onto a new line. Wrap text is under home. And if you want to adjust the width of the column, you click and drag this button. If you want to, do it, want to adjust the height, you click and drag this one. I forgot my uncertainty, so let me highlight my data, control X, and then I'm going to paste it starting right here. And now I've got room for the uncertainty. You want to insert the plus or minus symbol. So you hit the insert tab, and you move all the way to the right, and click symbol. The symbol chart pops up. Now, I was just using this, so it's first. But let's say you're maybe halfway down or somewhere else. Grab this and take the bar to the top. Then click down in the middle once. And on the far left, in the middle, you'll find your plus or minus button. So you can insert and then close. My uncertainty was 5. No, it was 0.5. And whoops, I lost, left out units. It should be 0.5 centimeters because it's the absolute uncertainty. Now, I also have uncertainty in my image height, h. I'm going to copy and paste this over so I don't have to find the plus or minus again. And this uncertainty, let's see, my paper, I chose 0.3. That's just what I chose. You, you may have chosen different values, and that's OK. Now, these measurements have to be as precise as the uncertainty. I need them all to have one decimal place, just like the uncertainty. So I have to come and hit this button under number. It's the button to add decimal places. You can add a bunch and then take them back away. You just want one so that the uncertainty and measurements are rounded to the same place. Likewise for this, I'm going to uh, highlight all of these and take them away. Let's see. There we go. I'm going to center everything here, hit this button and this button to center. Okay, we're ready to, ready to make a graph. You hit the Insert tab, and then choose a scatter plot. The first option with no lines. We'll never use lines in our scatter plots. I'm going to click and delete this. I need to make sure that my data is correct, so I'm actually just going to delete it and start from scratch. Right click, right click, and then you uh, choose select data. We're going to add a new data set, so you hit the add button. For the series name, we don't want anything. Go to the next box, which says x values. Choose the x values you want on the graph. Height, wait, no, height was my dependent. On the x, we put the independent variable. And then Highlight that equals 1, highlight the whole thing, hit backspace to delete it. So now it's empty, and you choose your y values. Notice I did not choose the uncertainty. OK, and then hit OK again. Here's my graph. I need to add data table, uh, sorry, titles. So you hit this plus. If You won't see the plus if the graph is not selected. So you have to select the graph, and then hit the plus. And then let's check the axis titles box and also chart titles below. You know what? Let's check error bars, too. We're going to have those. For the title, I'll just call this raw data. On the uh, y-axis, we have height, which is measured in centimeters. On the y-axis, we have distance, which is also me measured in centimeters. Click on a, an error bar. You can then right-click and do format, and this comes up. For the horizontal error bars, horizontal is x-axis, that should show the uncertainty, absolute uncertainty in D. Look here, and we see the absolute uncertainty is 0.5, a fixed value for all of these. So you come over to the right, and the error amount, you choose fixed value, make it 0.5, plus or minus 0.5. And now, oh, they're so small, you can barely see them. All right, let's right-click on the... the uh, vertical error bars and hit format. Again, this pops up. 
we want the vertical error bars to reflect the absolute uncertainty in the y-axis, height. The height all have the same, the heights all have the same uncertainty of plus or minus 0.3. So let me come over to error amount, choose fixed value, and make it 0.3. Good, like that. And now I can barely see my uncertainty, right? The, vertic the vertical are visible, but the horizontal are tough to see. So I'm going to right click on a data point and then go to Format Data Series. And now this pops up, right? You choose the paint can and then choose Marker. Marker options is what you want. Don't do an automatic marker. Make your own. Choose Built In. I like the circle, but you could choose other, ch other shapes. Instead of size 5, change the size to something a little bit more reasonable. I'll try 3. And that looks pretty good. Now I can see the data point, and I can also see the error bars. So change the, uh, yeah, change the size so that you can see your error bars. Okay, this looks to me like an inverse proportionality. That means the y-axis is equal to a constant times the x to the negative 1. My y-axis is height, so I don't put uh, y, I put height. And then my x value is distance, so that's to the negative 1. We see height is not proportional to distance. It would be absolutely wrong to write this equation down. What is height proportional to? Distance to the negative 1. So let's make another graph with distance to the negative 1 on the x-axis and height on the y, and that will be a proportional graph. It should form a straight line. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to again, I'm going to do not distance, but distance to the negative 1. And what will be the units? If you raise the distance to the negative 1, then the centimeters will be raised to the negative 1 as well. I'm going to highlight negative 1 here in the toolbar, or you can highlight it here. And then you go to font and hit this button, right, this one in the corner to see more options, and you choose superscript. And I'm going to do the same thing for this negative one, font, superscript. Okay, we're not going to have uncertainty in this just yet, we'll get to that later. We're going to have Excel calculate all of the values of distance to the negative one. So you hit equals to tell Excel, here comes a formula. And then you click, don't type out 5.0, caret negative 1, because you would have to do that for every single cell. Instead, you just click on uh, the cell containing 5.0, and you raise it to the negative 1. Right. Then you hit enter. Okay, let me make this just like that. Then you drag this all the way down, right? or you can also copy-paste. And look, it's 0, 0.0. Let's add some decimal places so we can see what these actually are. We'll figure out later how many decimal places we should have. We're also going to need to know what's the absolute uncertainty in these values. To find the uncertainty in d to the negative 1, I'm first going to find the percentage uncertainty in d to the negative 1, and then the absolute uncertainty in d to the negative 1. The way you get your delta is, again, you do insert, symbol. If you're at the very top, start at the very top, hit down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times, and then the delta is right here. So you can insert that way. Alright, again, we need to know what the uncertainty is in these values. We have a rule that says whenever, oops, whenever you take some measurement x and you raise it to a power, Okay, so for example, you raise it to the negative 1 power, like d. The way you find the percentage uncertainty in the new thing, y, is by multiplying the power, negative 1, here it is, negative 1, times the percentage uncertainty in what you raised, which is d in our case. So I have negative 1 times the percentage uncertainty in d, and that's how I find the new percentage uncertainty in d to the negative 1. But negative 1, when you take the absolute value, is going to go away, and you have percentage uncertainty in d to the negative 1 equals the percentage uncertainty in d. 
So we're just going to find the percentage uncertainty in D. Take the absolute uncertainty, divide by the value of D, and multiply by 100%. That's what goes in this column. Okay, let's do that. We're going to, again, do this. Say equals, and then take the absolute uncertainty in D, which is 0.5. We're going to divide by the value of d, which in this first case, here's the value of d, and then multiply by 100%. And then you drag that down. Next, we need the absolute uncertainty in d to the negative 1. In general, the percentage uncertainty is equal to the absolute uncertainty over the value times 100%. What we're dealing with here is d to the negative 1. So I've put in d to the negative 1 where appropriate. We're looking for the absolute uncertainty. So that means we have to multiply the percentage, multiply this column, by the value of d to the negative 1. That's this column. Multiply these two things and then divide by 100%. Let's do that. Equals this times this divided by 100% and you bring that all the way down. Now we have these values with so many sig figs. Um, we know absolute uncertainty can only have one sig fig. So let's go ahead and just round all of these to one sig fig, 0 0.002, 0 0.001, 0 0.0008. And you can just look and do this. Okay, good. We've rounded correctly. <clears throat> now, we need to say, all right, all of these values have to be rounded to the same precision, the same place as these. So let me go ahead and do that. This needs two fewer decimal places. This one needs one fewer, and so does the one with the two below it. And the rest are good. We're ready now to make our final chart. Let me move raw data down here. To create a second graph, check this out. Click on some white space near the top in the corner. I'm gonna click and drag. Now I press control on my keyboard. Still holding control, I let go of my mouse. So my control is still depressed on my keyboard. Okay, now I can let go of control. Instead of raw data, I want this to say process data. And again, we're gonna put not D, but D to the negative one on the x-axis. I'm gonna copy the negative one, it's highlighted. I'm gonna copy and paste it to get the units. All right, click on a data point. You're almost there. The purple and blue boxes pop up. Purple shows you what is on the x-axis. What are the x values for this graph? Blue tells you the y values. The x values right now are regular old d. We want it to be d to the negative 1. So don't get the white, uh, the white cross, but you want, you want the four arrow cross. See that cross there? The icon. Get that click and you can just drag it to the new x values whoa we got to fix those absolute uncertainties right click and do format error bars we don't have a fixed value for these error bars the x-axis is d to the neg negative one and this column shows us our uncertainties so we need not a fixed value but we want a custom value you hit custom specify value it could be plus or minus this amount. So you erase the equals one for plus, you choose that amount, but it could be minus that same amount. So you click and drag the absolute uncertainty in D to the negative one column. All right. This is the absolute uncertainty in these values. You hit okay and look at that, voila. The last thing that we're gonna do is right click. We're gonna, uh, let's see, right click on the data point click add trend line. We want a linear trend line like that and we want to display the equation on the chart. Don't worry about r squared, don't set the intercept. Okay. So once we have this, we are ready for the final little bit of analysis. Uh, this is what you're looking for, a graph that shows this. I got my x and y axis titles, the trend line, error bars, and then also this graph along with the data.